Hello! Welcome to video 3 of the self-care series. So today we're going to be talking about the areas of emotional self-care. But before I go on to self-care, I just want to revisit last week's topic, um, re mental self-care. Something I forgot to mention is atrophy and how and why the mind sometimes hits this. Now, when we live um, sedentary lifestyles, often atrophy starts to happen because the mind isn't getting enough stimulation. So if you're getting older and you feel that, you know, you've kind of lost that zen for life, it'd be really good for you to find something to do to incorporate into your life, to bring some newness into your life, because the newness that you create will help you to fire your brain cells up which then fires you up, which then ensures that atrophy gets lessened. Okay, so that's just a little bit extra for last week. So we're now going to move into the areas of emotional self-care. So emotional self-care is about validating our own feelings rather than kind of looking for validation from other people outside. Now, it's an interesting one because I have a certain take on this and I think it might be different from some people's and it might not be, I don't know. I mean, it's not as if we go out there and we say to everybody, this is how I think about this and this is how I think about this. And I don't have a belief structure as such. I just think that, you know, letting things work their way out. Um, but it's about feelings and validating the way that we feel inside. Yet there is a slight caveat here. Be aware of placing meaning on your feelings, be aware of them, and check into whether they're accurate. Like, are they your feelings that you're feeling? I know it's a question. The reason I ask it is because often we get programmed. Well, we actually not even often, we do get programmed. We get programmed from the ages of naught to seven because that's the time in our lives where we're like sponges and we absorb everything and we learn, right? They're preconditioned notions. So often our feelings are informed by those preconditioned notions, right? So we constantly feel as if something is so when we actually don't really believe or think it, right? So it's about questioning your inner beliefs and values and systems and asking yourself if they accurately represent who you are now. Then you can validate that space. If it is your feeling, and it really is yours, and you didn't borrow it from somewhere else, because <laughs> often we did. I don't know. I don't know. You're six years old, and you go out with a group of children and teachers, and you go somewhere, and someone says something. This is so, and you hear it, and you download it, and you go, this is so. And you spend the whole rest of your life going, this is so, this is so, this is so. When inside you're battling, because actually your inner system doesn't really agree with that. So that's checking into that. That's how we validate our feelings, right? It's not just to go, I'm right and you're wrong. Because this isn't about making anyone right or wrong, especially you and especially other people. This is about validating your feelings and understanding whether they accurately describe how you really authentically feel. You feel, not anyone else, okay? Right. So, so the reason I say it also is because our feelings can also get created through the lens of limited beliefs, right? So we tend to attach them to things that don't really serve us. So limited areas of thought that stop us from moving forward, like ceilings, for example. So we create a ceiling and go, I can only get to here. I can only get to here. I can only get to here. And then we, we argue about this feeling. We defend it to the hilt and we put barriers up if anyone tries to tell us anything different. Let me say, if your feelings are bringing up that kind of argumentative nature within you, then you might need to look at how accurate that feeling is in making sure you feel safe and loved, right? Because the thing is that in the need for feeling to almost control your element, and your aspect, your inner self, okay, your inner self, if it's making you feel uncomfortable, then it needs to be looked at and um, understood. And you need to ascertain whether it's helping you or hindering you. Okay. Ooh, so I take a deep breath in. That's quite a lot, isn't it? It's quite a lot of information. Yeah. So just take a deep breath into that. 
I'll just allow it to percolate a little bit and let you sort of think on that a little bit, okay? And it's also to be really careful because belief structures that are limited are toxic, yeah? They're like that toxic friend that you have that keeps coming around and not really honouring your boundaries. Belief systems and structures that we create within ourselves that do not honour us or our values or our systems are actually toxic to us. So it's to really get yourself into a space where you question your feelings, really question them. Um, because sometimes they're just rubbish, they're rubbish thoughts and they're rubbish feelings and they don't honour you and they don't care about you. So we end up getting that reflected back at us from the outside world. And then we think it's them when actually it's our inner belief system that's running this tape recorded script from our 0 to 7 conditioned area, right? So it's just to ask yourself, is this programming? Does it belong to me? Um, because if you get yourself stuck in a rut of programming, then you're gonna find yourself quite um, also almost entrenched and it can be hard to pull ourselves out of that, okay? We get entrenched in a feeling, a behavior, a limitation, a value, or a system that doesn't serve you, right? So although this is about emotionality and self-care and validating your own feelings, validation needs to come from accuracy and really checking in. Now, this isn't to say that if it's a belief that you do really believe it and you want to hold on to, that's yours. It's up to you if you want to do that. However, I would say as a little bit of um, advice, maybe advice, not even advice, maybe as a little bit of a secret, really. If you can let go of the beliefs that make it really difficult for you to perform outside in the big world, you will feel a lot better. Okay? Right. So, what else have we got? Okay. We've got healing inner wounds. So, by going through your feeling feelings and actually addressing them and looking into them, you can also look at your wounded areas. They often come from feelings, beliefs, limitations and systems and things that we think are accurate, even though they're not necessarily accurate. They sometimes come from those spaces. So this is to heal wounds inside by accessing our thought processes and how they are informing us. The kinds of wounds that are to do with our feelings, right? So, yeah, right? Okay. So the other thing that would come around um, emotional self-care would be doing stuff that really fills your heart with love and you know fills your heart up, things that you enjoy, they would come into that as well. And also um, giving love to those feelings that you really want to express. Because you might find that once you start looking at your feelings and ascertaining whether they're accurate or not, that what actually comes up for you is that half of the feelings you've got are nonsense that you don't like and you want to replace. So then you can put love in aspect, doing stuff that makes your heart sing in those feeling areas to give them life so they become realities rather than things that are hidden in your almost shadow or your golden shadow or something, right? So if you want to know a little bit more about that, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about golden shadow and shadow stuff later on in another video. But for now, we're just thinking on that we're looking at how accurate our feelings really are. And we're only validating what really serves us. And we're going to get rid of anything that no longer serves us. If you have crappy, rubbish thoughts and emotions and feelings that you're kind of defending to the hill, give yourself that moment. Okay, just a moment to question. Do I really believe this? Is this really mine? Who says this? Is it really me? Is it someone else? And you've also got to be really, really, um, like, you've got to really honour this. Because we can be quite resistant and want to hold on to these, even though they don't belong to us. So it's about really watching the way you think things. And then being really aware of how you respond to that, okay? But it's also about noticing your feeling around a belief or a limitation or a self-serving thing that isn't obviously helping you. Look, it's fine to have feelings and it's fine to have thoughts. Yet we need to be sure they're our thoughts and they belong to us and that they serve us. Yeah. Wow, I like it. I like this topic because it's it's so interesting and it's it's quite a meaty one really because there's a lot to be had there by looking at our own feelings and checking in with them, right? There's a lot to be had there. So now 
in this area we are stepping into self-love we're stepping into the areas of self-love because once we start looking at our feelings we're moving into self-love because if you care enough about yourself you can remove stuff that, that and love yourself enough you can remove stuff that doesn't fit your system your system now rather than taking on stuff that was in your system at an age when it wasn't developed enough to recognize those things don't serve you right so, so we're moving into areas like our self-esteem how much we value ourselves, our self-worth, our self-confidence, that kind of thing, right? So from now on, we're going to be in the self-love and self-care areas, kind of fusing together and moving through understanding and developing and whacking through those, right? So remember, in the whole of this, in all of this, remember that we're looking at creating expanded states of being rather than contracted states of being. If our emotional self-care is at a low ebb, we tend to create contracted states of being, which make us feel more and more uncomfortable. So this is to put yourself into a space where you're creating systems of self-care that make you feel more and more expanded and happy and really, really... What's the words? I'm using my words that I can't think at all. <laughs> much either i've been quite stiff today so i do apologize for that <laughs> but yeah um yeah this is just a way for you to like really expand yourself and to really open yourself up to to everything to be your full self and to recognize if things are really like curtailing you and putting the lid on you yeah so in next week's video we're going to be looking at relational self-care so relationship and like who are you spending time with and who are you giving your space and energy to now this really moves into self-love and i put it really into self-love actually but i will put it in this self-care series as a smaller video and then as i go into the self-love topics we'll talk more about it in a bigger way but so yeah so that's what we've got so looking forward to seeing you next week do take care namaste everyone and if you do like these topics you're interested in what i'm saying follow subscribe hit notification bells put comments in i'd absolutely love to engage with you about these areas take care and i'm sending you all lots of love bye